When I was a kid, I did not like horror movies. Like, I didn't see uh, Nightmare on Elm Street till I was almost 30. He's clearly been an awful influence on you. It's true. That's exactly it's it. true. Carroll County really, I think, caught people by surprise. There's intensity and the scope of its stories and the sheer amount of bloodshed. Tell me about putting together this final arc and what you're hoping to accomplish with it. You know, it's uh, it's it's it is it's bittersweet for me because uh, every time I think about the book ending, I get a little sad because I've had so much fun writing it. And uh, but the the nice thing about it is we are telling the story we set out to tell from the beginning, and we're wrapping it up on our own terms. It's ending exactly where it's supposed to end. And, uh, and this is what we've been building to over the course of all these issues. So the story didn't change at all? You always kind of knew this would be how you would want to end it? We had milestones. We knew what we wanted to happen along the way and we knew what the ending was, but we definitely left ourselves enough room to, to change things and to let certain characters grow. There were characters that came out that we didn't necessarily expect to be major players when we introduced them, but we loved them so much that they became major players. We left enough room for that to uh, uh, actually to surprise us because I feel like if, if we can surprise ourselves we can surprise the readers so we left room but we still had goalposts along the way. Tyler um, I mentioned that it's a southern gothic mm -hmm. story uh, this has kind of become like its own genre in and of itself over the last few years in comics creators such as yourselves Jason Aaron and, and other guys have done these books yeah. what is it about th these types of stories and their setting that that provides such fertile uh, content for, for you guys to really play with and have fun with. I think it's, it, it, one thing that's really nice is it's a sort of a, it's a culturally rich portion of America that is very specific. So it's very, it, it, it's more interesting place to visit than say, um, I don't want to list all the other boring places in America, <laughs> but you know, like other boring, more boring places. So you know, there's a, there's a lot of history, and some of it's really dark history, and some of it's really good history, and it's a rich place to explore. I think. I think for an artist, this series has really had a lot of great uh, things to really delve into and work on, from the great characters. I mean, obviously, the focal point of the series, but the surroundings, and then of course all the violence and all the really dark moments that. This sicko keeps writing into the stories. Um, what did you enjoy uh, drawing the most? You know, it was one of the things when we were um, first deciding what we were going to pitch to Dark Horse. We bounced a couple different ideas together, and um, one of the things when when Colin mentioned Harrow County, he was like, "Oh, it takes place in the woods," and I was like, "Let's do that." And it was because I really wanted to draw woods. Um, I had just moved to to Oregon and was living out in the woods, basically, and it was. It was just really getting into it, so it was, I was really excited to sort of explore um, drawing some of that scenery and stuff. How much fun has it been to tell this story, and especially focused on Emmy? She's a fascinating character who's been through a lot, to say the least. Um, what has that character been like to, to be so tied to for the last couple of years? You know, Emmy may be one of my favorite characters I've written. When I first started writing a character, I thought, well, this is a character that has this sort of innocence about her. And, uh, and and that was what appealed to me. But what really, as we go along, it's not this innocence, it's just really this, uh, this uh, her approach and how she she handles these these terrible things that are thrown her way. And, and she kind of takes everything in stride. And and one of the things that I like most about her is that she does what I can't. When, when Look, my car breaks down and I have, you know, I have a meltdown. <laughs> but Emmy can encounter these horrible creatures, these flaming ghosts, the abandoned, this monstrous cow-like beast. And she's like, she takes it all in stride and she, she handles it and she, the way she approaches those things, it, it appeals to me and I think that's what makes her such a strong character. Uh, and it's just been a lot of fun for me. Yeah, I love the way Emmy is like one of the few characters in comics who is sort of really explicitly trying to be a good person. Yeah and being asked to do all sorts of things that makes her like compromise that in different ways and yeah I think I think that's interesting yeah stuff. she's she's trying to find out who she is and where she fits in the world and that's something I think most of us can can relate to she just has the added complication is that she may very well be the reincarnation of this horrible witch and she's fighting these a lot of these base instincts which are pulling her in this really awful direction but she's fighting really hard and I think that's what people really like about her and relate to her but we all have, you know, our dark moments and 
not quite as dark as hers, but <laughs> yeah. but you're right. As you said, she is really trying her best to be the best she can be and be a good mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always quite turn out that way. Yeah. yeah. Is it more important to have a happy ending or a satisfying ending? I think it needs to be satisfying. I think uh, uh, I think it, it needs to be an ending that's right for the story. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colin, your, your horror au revoir is, is quite expansive. You're currently also doing uh, The Brothers Dracul. You're doing like 15 other books, I think. It's not quite 15, but yeah. <laughs> it's close. You're keeping busy. What, uh, what else can you tell us about what you, what you have coming down the pipeline? I'm doing Brothers Dracul, which is a sort of a, a, this, this historical horror story uh, with Vlad Tepes and his brother Radu and, and what they were doing when they were teenagers. Um, and then I'm doing a book called Dark Ark. We all know the story of Noah's Ark but this is the story of the second arc that we don't know about. It's full of monsters and horrible things. I've got a lot of, of horror books that I'm kind of working on right now and, and hopefully we'll be announcing soon. Where did the, the love of horror stories come from? You know, I don't know. I, look, I grew up in the country and, and, uh, and I grew up in, I, I was just sitting here thinking we were talking about Southern Gothic and I, this vivid memory came to me of when I was a kindergartner, we lived in an old farmhouse in, this, in Newton Grove, North Carolina, and I vividly remember the sheriff driving rapidly down the country road and skidding to a stop and coming out and telling us that the UFOs were abducting people in the town. And, and that kind of event was, was commonplace. And, uh, and I think it just warped me in some way and, and it, this, it left an impression and messed me up in some serious ways. Was there a sheriff in your town that, that came screaming no. by, the UFOs are coming, the UFOs are coming? <laughs> it's funny, when I was a kid, I did not like horror movies. Like, I didn't see uh, Nightmare on Elm Street till I was almost 30. I remember, like, in high school, I watched Naked Lunch, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't finish it. It gave me a stomach ache, and I, like, I, couldn't take, I couldn't take freaky stuff. And I don't even know when I started to like it, but now it's probably my, my favorite genre, if it's done well. He's clearly been an awful influence on you. It's true. That's exactly That's it. True. <laughs>